This is WPTV. Welcome back to the desk. Spring is in the air, and the boys of the summer are here back at it again. And joining me on today's MLB block, we have Anthony, Joe, and Jimmy. Now, gentlemen, this is going to break all our hearts to start off the block, but Zach Britton is heading the, to the injured list for a long time. Probably a month or two, won't come back until the summer. Um, it, it, he had an arm injury. Joe, we'll start with you. How bad is this? I mean, it, it, obviously it's pretty bad. We're going to take a look at, at Zach Britton's stats here. 2020, he really was dominant for the Yankees out of the bullpen. Uh, yeah, one and two record. You take that with a grain of salt for a reliever. But that under two ERA and 16 strikeouts in 19 innings is is dominant. Um, the thing about this, however, is that he'll be back in time for the playoffs. As long as he's back and reared up and ready to go to maybe pitch one to two innings in the playoffs, I am okay as a Yankee fan. I want him to take his time to get better and get ready. In the interim, I would like to see the Yankees potentially sign Shane Green, who's still on the free agent market. Anthony? All right. Everyone, take a deep breath. Everything's going to be all right. You know, Zach Britton, I know it sucks. He's hurt. I get it. You still got Chapman in that bullpen. You still got Justin Wilson. You still got Darren O'Day. You still got arms in that bullpen to hold out. You still got Chad Green. You have arms in that bullpen to hold down the fort. And I'm not surprised. And I wouldn't be surprised if an internal candidate steps up to help carry the load. I want you guys to keep your keep an eye on someone. Lucas Lester Lukey. Triple L, but he's a W, right? Four innings this spring. I guess only spring training. I get it. But just bear with me. Four innings this spring. Two hits allowed, 10 strikeouts, no walks. He's been carrying it up this spring. I feel like the Yankees have their eye on him as potentially filling in that role for Britain. Three L's, but still a dub. I like that. That was clever, Anthony. Thank Jimmy, you. <laughs> Jimmy, th- this, this is a hard one for the Yankees, but I think they're going to bounce back, but do you? Yeah, I think they're definitely going to bounce back. You know, the Yankees, they're known for their, a lot of their power in the lineup, but they've made moves to rotation. The bullpen is still very solid, as Anthony alluded to. I mean, anytime you hear elbow injury for a pitcher, you, you immediately gasp. But this is a bone chip. He'll be back in a couple of months. You hope he comes back ready. You do lose a guy that can force a lot of ground balls, get a lot of strikeouts, and be clutch late in games. But as Joe said as well, as long as he's back by the playoffs, I think the Yankees will be all right. We just got to hope he comes back healthy. Yeah, it's, it's going to definitely be very interesting. We hope that Zach Britton gets healthy. And he also said, I think he said he lost like 18 pounds in 10 days due to COVID. Yeah, it was, it, it, he's had some bad luck, but I do hope that his luck gets better. But um, moving on, uh, free agency, it was very slow for a long time. Then it started to heat up. But we got two late signings. We got Jake Odrizzi. He's going to the Houston Astros. I think that's a good move for them. And then we have Jackie Bradley Jr. going to Milwaukee with the Brewers. Anthony, we'll go to you. Oh, what do we see from what's the bigger what's the bigger thing for this deal? Did, who do you think won this these late signings? The the thing is with the injuries to Forrest Whitley and Framber Valdez, you got to go Jake Odorizzi with the Astros because I get Odorizzi. He doesn't have he didn't have the best numbers last year. I understand that, but this guy is going to probably slide in as a number two starter between behind uh, Zach Ranke and Lance McCullers in Houston. Um, I understand all that. I, I get the I get the apprehension. I get that he's not the best, but Force Whitley is a absolute stud. He's gonna have Tom John surgery. He's out for the year. I get that. Um, from Valdez was a beast last year, particularly in the postseason. But I get to understand he's gonna be out for a few months. I understand he only pitched 13 two thirds innings last year. Was a 6.59 year right? But I have faith that Odor is he solid track record. He's gonna turn it around, and this will end up being a big signing for the Astros. Now, Joe, let's go to uh, Jimmy Bradley, uh, Jackie Bradley Jr., excuse me. Uh, shout out to Jimmy Bradley, a member of WP Sports Desk. But uh, <laughs> Jackie Bradley Jr., a lot, he, his name was put in a lot of places that needed center fielding this year. But he's going to the Brewers. What are you looking for this deal, Joe? I think that this is a great move for the Brewers. And I think the Brewers really came out the winners here. Jackie Bradley Jr.'s numbers are not the flashiest numbers. You're looking at a 283 batting average, seven homers, 22 RBIs, 32 runs, 814 OPS, which is very good uh, for Jackie Bradley Jr. But what he brings to the table is some of the best center field defense in baseball, some of the best center field defense that we've ever seen. And not only that, he's a clutch hitter. I think we have seen, um, as Yankee fans and the Red Sox consistently playing in big games over the last few years, he always seems to come in clutch in those big moments. Great for the clubhouse. The Brewers, this could be, they're going to be in a tight division matchup. 
it's going to be them and the Cardinals, I think, at the top of that division. And this could really put them over the edge. Jimmy? Uh, I think the Oda Rizzi move is the bigger move to talk about considering where the Astros are as far as always playoff contention. You know, the Brewers in the NL Central, like Joe said, they could win it. I don't see them being a threat to anybody. Uh, Odorizzi, they got a young rotation. Outside of Zach Granke, he's got Christian Javier, Jose Urquidy. Odorizzi kind of provides that veteran pitching leadership that you want in the rotation. So with Verlander out, I think this is a move that they had to make, and this will be helpful to them in the long run. Yeah, definitely, because the Astros are definitely looking for some pitching with all the major injuries. Three different starters are out. Verlander's been out. So it's definitely going to see what – and Odorizzi, he's, he's not a bad pitcher, you know. I, th- I think he'll be decent enough in Houston. I think Jackie Bradley Jr. is going to be very good in Milwaukee. But um, we move on. And last year, there was a little, it was a shortened season, only 60 games. But a lot of teams were really good last year. Very good teams. And, you know, we had the Dodgers sitting at 43 and 17, the Rays at 40 and 20, the Twins at 36 and 24, Athletics at 36 and 24 as well, and the Braves at 35 and 25. Now, the question is, out of these teams, who do we think is going to fall off? And if I'm just using my brain and what happened to this team, I think the I think it's had, it has to be the Rays. They lost their best pitcher. I know they still have pretty good hitting, but I think that they could have won a World Series. And losing their best pitcher, that definitely is going to be a hit. But, Anthony, we'll go to you. Who do you think is going to – out of those teams, who do you think is going to be the worst? I got to go with the Indians. I know they didn't win the division last year, but, I mean, they had a 35-25 and 25 record. Still a very solid record. They, they hosted the wild card round. But when you lose Francisco Lindor and Cookie Carrasco out of your rotation, that's a big hit. I mean, I, and I don't know how this team is going to be able to perform now now that uh, those two players are gone, especially like the heart of Carrasco and the heart of Lindor aren't there anymore. I feel like that's going to have an in, club, in clubhouse, in locker room effect. Not to mention, I think the White Sox are better than they were last year. They're good. We're going to see a full season out of Luis Robert. Uh, I like what they added in the offseason, Hendricks and, and uh, Lance Lynn. I think they're going to get better, and that's only going to make things harder for the Indians to, to succeed. Absolutely. Jimmy? Uh, I'm going to say the Miami Marlins are going to come back down the light this year. You know, in a shortened season, we saw them get into the postseason. Uh, the, the New York Mets, along with the Atlanta Braves, these are two, going to be two powerhouses in the NL East. The Miami Marlins in a full season. I just don't think they have enough talent. And you got to keep in mind the Nationals and the Phillies always hang around. So I look for them to regress, but uh, – yeah, then we'll look for the Miami Marlins to come back down to earth. Joe? I'm going to go with the Oakland A's, who really have been good consistently year in, year out. Fourth best record last year. They lost their closer. That's a big hit. Uh, Liam Hendricks was really outstanding for them at the back end of the bullpen. On top of that, the rotation is question mark city uh, with Mike Fires leading it. I don't trust a team with Mike Fires and Sean Manaya at the top to be one of those in the upper echelon. And don't forget Marcus Simeon, guy who was up right up there in the MVP talks a couple of years ago, just gone over to Toronto. I don't think that the A's are going to be as unstoppable as they have been. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see. I can't wait for baseball, guys. Only 20 more days, and then we get to see it for real. But um, on a I don't want to call this a sadder note, but on a lesser note, Joe, let's go to you. Um, The Texas Rangers, you know what's been going on in Texas. Things are opening up at 100% capacity. Um, But the the Texans, not the Texans, the Rangers, yeah, I'm thinking of the wrong sport. But the Rangers, they're they're going to open up to 100%. Joe, is this smart? I, I don't think so. We're going to look at the Texas COVID numbers as of a couple days ago, March 10th. Their total cases in the state, this is just in the state, uh, 2.3 million. Um, We're talking almost 45,000 deaths. And then we we go to the available hospital beds there, Um, only 11,500, which isn't not very much, and even less available ICU beds, just over 1,000 with a positive rate, a molecular positivity rate of over 65 this seems very reckless. I understand new stadium. You want to get as many folks in there as possible, but you have to pump the brakes. I think that there is a way to do this safely. Um, But in my opinion, it does not appear to me that the Rangers and the state of Texas have a willingness to comply with those safety measures. Anthony quickly. Yeah, I mean, I look at this long and hard. I try to find a general positive for this. But the only positive I can see is Texas making more money. And I get that that's what all this is about. 
but I feel like at the same time, you got to be more careful. I mean, and when you also consider that the, the product that Texas is even, is even putting out in the field, I feel like that they'd be more cautious knowing that their team is, I know this shouldn't really go into my thinking, but I understand that even though, uh, like, I get you're trying to get people in the ballpark, but the product you're putting out in the field is not a amazing product anyway. So I feel like you'd want to be more cautious regardless with how many uh, people you let into your building, but that's just me. Yeah, I, I totally agree because it's so idiotic. It's I'll, I'll like you're gonna let you're gonna let you're gonna let your you're gonna pack your steam so people could watch. I don't know. Um, Chris Davis get hit a hit a meaningless home run. Like yeah, I don't on. know. That's just me. Come on, Jimmy, close us out. Well, I think at the end of the day, it shows that baseball and sports in general. At the end of the day, it's a business, and uh, when Texas alleviates guidelines for mask mandates and opening things up the texas rangers you just have to assume they're going to take advantage of it they're going to make their money and they're going to put butts in seats so i don't really fault them as much as much as you would the state of texas and their officials but you can't blame them for wanting to put fans in the ballpark it's good as a fan perspective it's good to see everyone wants to sports and life to return to normal time will tell we'll have to see yeah time will definitely tell as i said 20 more days until the opening day for the major leagues. Can't wait for it. That falls on my birthday. I'm going to see Garrett Cole pitch on my birthday. So I'm definitely excited for that. But we are about to throw a four seam fastball right to the NFL crew as they give you some breaking news about the quarterback position in New England. Stick around here on WP Sports Desk. <laughs> 